I think for us, uh, it started with me personally. Um, I'm a risk taker, and uh, I don't normally believe that um, when I'm in formal employment, that's the only income I should have. I, I try and do other things. I try and um, see if I can add to my my income. So I decided to do piggeries. Um And then with a friend of mine, we started the Piggery project in Palisa. We're doing so well, we researched, we got vets, we got everyone. We got to a point where we had 800 uh, pigs at that place. And we were selling, almost every week we were selling uh, pigs and it was very successful. Then one day, um, I moved to Nigeria, uh, posted to Nigeria, working in Nigeria. He call, well, my colleague called and said, um, there's something happening at the farm. The pigs are dropping one by one. So we called in a vet, and the vet came, and they told us, we have swine fever. And within five days, we lost all 800 pigs. I've been an insurer at that time for about 21 years. So I started thinking, but why was there no insurance in Uganda? What's, what's going on? So when I came back, we started looking at this and I was working for a company and I told them, why can't we do something? Then they said, okay, I don't think there's a market for it. I said, let me try and see what we can do. So I transfers the whole of Uganda, talking to people, asking them, what's going on now? I mean, what are your problems? I went to Kapchowa, I went to the West, I went to all over the country, just trying to find out what are the problems. And even in Kapchowa, I met a farmer, um, the farmer leader of a group, who told me that he had lost two farmers who had committed suicide. Why? Because there was a drought, they had borrowed from the bank, and the bank wanted its money, and they just decided it was not worth it, they just committed suicide. So I went back and said, but I think I have a solution, because I've researched them, looked at the region, I've looked worldwide, these things are happening, why can't we do the same? From where I come from, things are happening, why can't we do the same? They said, go ahead, let's see what we can do. So we started trying to look at agriculture and see how agriculture can, can work. Um, well, to cut the long story short, a consortium of seven insurers was formed, and it was called Kumbula. It started selling agriculture insurance, but strictly just doing drought insurance. Um, as we were going on, we started thinking the uptake was not going on and things were not happening. So we, again, we started looking at what is the problem? Why are things not happening? We started looking outside again and others, and we started seeing that maybe the products we are selling are not the right products for the people. Let's again look at the, uh, and talk to the people. So we discovered that one of the things was that some of the products were not right. We're almost cutting and testing what is happening elsewhere, which might not happen and might not be ideal for Uganda. So we started now looking specifically at what should we do. One also other thing that started coming is as, as soon as we started looking at these products and they are happening, we saw that the pricing was too very high. And nothing much could be done about the pricing because of the nature of the risk of agriculture. So we said, let's look again and learn from others. So we looked looked at India, we looked at Brazil, we looked at Senegal, Mali, Malawi, and discovered that the government was heavily involved in helping the agriculture insurance industry. And they were doing that by a lot of things, subsidies, and also uh, data, uh, uh, data uh, 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 issues, uh, trying to make sure that data is available. Because for insurance to work, you need a lot of, a lot of data. So we also approached uh, our own government here, and fortunately, 
they did support us and say they can do something. So that is when the agriculture insurance scheme that I'm going to talk about was born. This was in July uh, 2016, where the government said, okay, we'll put together stakeholders in the agriculture insurance uh, um, um, uh, sector to see what the scheme should do and have everyone contribute uh, uh, to that and make sure that we have a scheme that works for, for everyone. So the scheme was uh, launched in July 2016, which is a, a public-private uh, partnership. Um, and its main aim was to hedge uh, Ugandan farmers against the natural risks that come up uh, when you're doing your, your farming. Whether it's crops, whether it's livestock, whatever it is, um, um, the, the scheme would help you on. So the government also asked that any insurance that was interested would also join in the scheme, but then 10 insurance companies decided that they would want to join uh, the scheme and, in, and, uh, and uh, offer agriculture insurance. And they together formed a consortium, which is called the Agro Consortium, which is the consortium that I lived um, since uh, 2016. The aim of the consortium is a platform for these 10 insurance companies to insure the farmers on different things. So we insure crops, but we also insure uh, cattle, poultry, pigs, and also we are into uh, fisheries. Eligibility of the scheme, any farmer is eligible into the scheme. The only difference is that we categorize you whether you're a large scale or a small scale uh, farmer. And now what we do is also, uh, like my elder brother said, yeah, we talk to the people and see what they want and come up with something. And in this case, we came up with that uh, um, uh, insurance where we're, we're insuring the batches of people that, that had taken uh, some investment, um, I mean, that had invested in him. So we found that it's always good to always talk to the people first, hear what they want to insure, and then tailor make it uh, to that. We categorize farmers into large scale farmers and small scale farmers. I'm not going to talk about crop, I'm going to talk more about uh, on the animal side. Uh, for the animals, we categorize you according to the number of animals that you have. Uh, so if you have a certain number, below that certain number, you're a small scale, and above that number, you're a large scale farmer. So in, in this case, maybe for cattle, if you have less than 30 animals, you are a small scale farmer, and if you have more, you are, you are a large scale farmer. That distinction comes into what the government assists you with in terms of subsidy. So if you're a large scale farmer, the government assists you with 30% of your premium payment. So you only pay 70%, the government will pay the other 70%. If you're a small scale farmer, you do 50 50 with the, with the government. And then we also appeal to a government that there are certain areas which are disaster prone. Uh, they are always year in, year out uh, disaster prone. Uh, Kasese, the Mount Egon region, Isingiro, Ngora, all those places, they are already, always um, disaster prone. In those areas, the government gives 80% uh, subsidy and you only pay uh, 20%. Uh, um, I did make my presentation specific for what we're doing. We had uh, what for this uh, for this uh, gathering here, but we do cover uh, a lot of other things. But we do on the animal side, we do cover drought, and we cover this drought based on pastures. Um, we also can cover loss of uh, uh, milk production. We can also cover uh, when your animal loses its value because of a drought. Then we have what we call the multi uh, uh, uh insurance. It can be crop, it can be with livestock. Uh, with the multi uh, crop insurance, we normally use it for the large-scale uh, farmers. Uh, this, we have different um, uh, risks that we cover from um, uh, death due to different things, disease, um, theft, and, and all, all the other normal uh, issues that, um, uh, that uh, affect the, the, the animals. Um, we also have 
uh, known that um, that yes we use for the uh, large scale, but the small scale farmers also have uh, issues. And um, I'm not going to talk much uh, about that, but I'll just paraphrase it and, and talk about it in summary. For the small scale farmers, we use uh, satellite uh, technology, that's the innovation that we use, and track the pastures, how the pastures are doing. Uh, and once we know that there's lots of pastures, we also know that in turn, uh, the, the animals are, are suffering. So that's the kind of uh, um, technology that we uh, we use. So in the end, uh, our technology will allow us uh, to be able to read uh, what is happening uh, and make that into, um, we, we can make that into something that we can use and then allocate how much percentage of pasture has been lost uh, or has been, has been um, uh, or whether it was a, a normal rainfall uh, season or not. Um, I'm going to cut out most of these other things, but I'm going to say in our case, um, unlike most other uh, presenters where we would say maybe government needs to do this to us, we are happy to say that the government has actually helped us uh, uh, with, uh, with subsidy. They've also helped us with funds for awareness. Obviously, we still need more help in terms of awareness. Mm -hmm. But my, my message or my pitch, my elevator pitch is that the government gave us money. Uh, each year, they give us five billion. If we use it, it can be extended to 10 billion. My pitch is that the money is available. We do not want to take it back, it's there. So those that are insured, I mean, they've got uh, cattle or, or poultry or whatever to insure, uh, please visit us. The money is there to help you with subsidy. So you, uh, so you need to take advantage of, uh, of that. Uh, thank you.